Again, thankful for those that are tuned in to be a part of the broadcast and mindful of those that help us to get uh, where we're at today. It's not uh, by any means of our own uh, doing, but because God has ordered different ones in our lives and, and through prayers and through means and through your support, we're able to do what we do. Amen. So it takes uh, a group effort and we're looking for God to just come on the scene and move and have His way with us today. Anxious to get into the Word of God, but did want to say thank you. And If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to follow along in the book of Hebrews chapter 12. If you have your Bibles, I encourage you to look along with us and just desiring uh, the Lord to help us this morning. I believe that He will. Uh, trust in Him for it to be able to deliver that which He's laid on our heart. I appreciate God. Just wonderful uh, presence and, and His blessings that He gives unto us uh, every day that we're willing to seek Him in His presence. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, I'm going to read uh, just a portion of verse 2. Very familiar scripture, I'm sure. But this is how the Lord has led us. So let's go to verse 2 of chapter 12 of Hebrews. And the Bible says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, Amen? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And this morning we want to speak to us about do you know the author? Do you know the author? We want to know more about the Scripture and we find ourselves sitting in Bible study after Bible study or uh, even at home we're going through different uh, maybe Bible reading schedules. There's different things that are out there trying to encourage us to get into the Bible and to read the Bible. But have we met the author is what I'm trying to get at today. We can look at the Word of God and we can study the Word of God. There's a big difference between studying the Bible learning the history with the dates and certain customs that were taking place of that time and era. There's a big difference when you meet the author, when you meet the one that inspired and wrote and spoke this scripture that we have today. Amen? Have we met the author? Do you know him? Studying the Word of God, it is necessary and important. But to have an encounter with God in the text, the author, the God of the text, to have an encounter with Him, can I tell us, is more important. So do you know the author? We read, looking unto Jesus, the author. The author of our faith. The author and the finisher of our faith. We commune with God through prayer, and through His Word. That's how we have that communion basis. And we get into that chamber. We get into that place with God. And we are doing these and, and, and you know, I'm not saying that nobody is, is doing it. It's not, it's, it is a process. And we may already be doing these things, but maybe today you can take this teaching more than likely is what it is and let us go a step farther and change what our 2017 prayer and devotion time should be about or is going to be about. Because we are about meeting the author of this word that we have before us today that we heard. Not just merely studying the Bible to say that I've studied the Bible, to say that I have all this knowledge that I, you know, of the history accounts and the custom. No, it, it's to know the one that has sent forth this word that we have today. Again, there are probably this process that, that probably things that you're already doing and I'm not cutting it down. I'm not saying that it's wrong. I'm not saying my way is the right way. This is just the leadership and how the Spirit has led us. But maybe you want to do some things or you, you, maybe you just don't even know how to get started with some things. So as we approach into the new year, amen, we're going to be concerned about meeting the author of the Holy Word 
of God. The first step is probably going to be such a shocker to you, so hold on. The first step in, in going and meeting the author is simply by reading. <laughs> Yes, that may be obvious. Wow, you know, I read the Word of God. But look, but look, when we read the Word of God, you're reading it and, and inwardly you are listening attentively for what God is saying through that Scripture. There's a difference when I just read looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Huh? I am listening... And looking in for what is God saying to me in this particular passage of Scripture. There, there is where we find the word or phrase that is speaking to us. That is sticking out more than, than any of the other words that are on the page. And we're, we're listening attentively and we're finding that scripture and we're saying, oh, these words are jumping out. Now notice it's just one portion of a scripture. And we can take each and every verse if we want to. And we're saying, what is God saying to me in this scripture? What is sticking out that others that seem like I'm looking at that I'm going to take it personally? Because again, it's great to study the Word of God, but we want to meet the author of the Word of God. And that is what's going to change you and your prayer life and your devotion time and your walk and who you are in God. That, that encounter, amen, with the author of the Word of God is what is going to change you in such a personal way. Uh, as we look at the scripture, looking into Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. When I say that you're reading the word of God and you are listening attentively, it's similar to the experience of Elijah. And it was made personal when Elisha heard the still small voice. When Elijah heard the still, small voice, we hear the reading of the Word. We read the Word. But Elisha said this. He said, it was not in the wind. It was not in the earthquake. It was not in the fire. But he told us in 1 Kings 19 and 12, he said, but a still, small voice. He had an encounter. He met the author. He met the creator. And when he had that encounter with God, the Bible said he wrapped his face in his mantle and he came forth to the opening of the cave that he was in because he was having a pity party of one. But he heard attentively the still, small voice. And that still, small voice is what speaks to us out of the Word of God, out of the Scripture, that if we will look at and begin to know the author of the Word of God, knowing the author, encountering God by His Word. After we've read and we have listened, we're looking for the Word or for the phrase that is speaking to us, what we do then is begin to meditate on those words. It begins to, I say, chew on it. It, it sticks with you. It dwells with you. Uh, it, it's not something I heard Brother Chris saying earlier on in the earlier programming about that. There was something, a particular verse that he chewed on all week long and he was sharing with another brother and different things. Exactly. So they, it sticks with you. And this can occur every day. But when you read it and, and the Word speaks to you and you begin to meditate or you chew on it spiritually, you allow the Word of God to become individualistic for you. And this is all drawing towards becoming to know the author of the Word of God. Now, as I said earlier, we're looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Sister CJ reads that. What does she pull out of the, the initial reading? That the author 
and the finisher. He is the author and the finisher. And then it becomes personal as I begin to chew on it because he says of our faith. I make it personal. I said of my faith. His word. That's for me for today. Jesus. If I look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. Now it starts to get personal. He is the one that is writing my story. He is the one that is writing your story from the beginning to the end. Now, we are slowly beginning to move into what is the knowing of the author. The one that has written the Holy Word for anyone that will make it a part of their life. Real basic, real simple, I understand. But hang on. We read the Word of God. We're listening for that phrase. We're listening for the Word. We're making it personal. We're meditating on it. We're believing that. That's what I'm saying. Jesus is the one that is writing each of our stories from the beginning to the end. And now we are ready to pray. What? I've read the Word. I've meditated. Now I am in the position I am ready to pray. And speak the word that God gave me. I'm ready to speak it back to God with an understanding and even with a boldness. And I can come before God because he tells me in an earlier part of Hebrews, he said, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Wow. So not only do I read the Word and find what the Word is speaking to me and do I make it personal, but now I'm praying it and I'm coming back to God and I'm praying the Scripture back to Him and I have this understanding that God, this is what the Scripture is saying, God, you got the final say-so. Huh? Is that not similar to what some of the prayer should be? I, I began to think of myself this morning as, as this uh, particular Scripture was sticking out and I realize that you are the author and the finisher of my faith. And so I declare and I come before God in prayer and I say, God, you've got the final say-so. You are the finisher of my faith. Send forth your spirit and strengthen your daughter. For your mercy and your grace are here in my time of need. Amazing. I'm coming into the encountering of the author. You are God alone, and you are my deliverer. The one that is set down at the right hand of the throne of God is what the Bible says. And He encourages us, and He speaks to us, and as I'm looking unto Jesus, the one that is writing my story, the one that is finishing my story, the one that is of my faith, that I can trust in and I've got my eyes and I'm looking to Him not only physically but spiritually and I realize that God, You will have the final say-so. I am only here today because You've ordered me to be here today. I am only here today because You have strengthened me to be here today. Amen? You're allowing the Word because why? I know the author. There was an encounter that took place. There was strength that was built up. Amen. Only because we begin to read and to meditate and now we are praying and we are getting into that place that will understand who the author of the Word of God is. And it is by the Holy Ghost. It is by His Spirit. And so I say, do you know the author today? Because once you have met Him and once you get into that place and once you realize even just the simplicity of knowing that Jesus is the author and the finisher of your faith, amen, you can rest in God's presence. There have been probably numerous scriptures through your walk with God that you realize God has just blessed you with or God has spoke to you and just different ones can come randomly up to your mind. But when you come into that place and it comes alive to you and you're praying it back to God and you have that encounter with Him, you can simply just rest in His presence and you move from reading the Word of God to simply being there. We have a phrase of let go and let God. Do you know the author? 
Do you know the author of your faith? The one that called you out of the darkness that you were in one day, those of us that are saved. My friend, if you don't know Jesus, can I encourage you to know Him before it's everlasting too late? That if He begins to deal with your heart as the seeds are being planted, not only through this radio broadcast and through the many others and the other things that are done out here at the Lockler Ministry, oh God, you're able to reach out to Him. But can I tell us those that have got to that place, sometimes we forget about what He's done and where He's brought us from. But that we got to be reminded of what the Word says. But we're not taking time anymore to read it, much less to meditate, much less, my God, to even pray anymore to get to the place that we need to be because He is the author of our faith. And can I tell us, He's also the finisher. But do you know this here? As He gave us in the Word, do you know the author that said this uh, scripture that I'm about to read to us in Luke 10? In verse 19, Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall be by any means hurt you. I'm sure some could have quoted it. But what is this word saying to me right here? Jesus said real plain what just leapt out to me. He said, I give you, I give you, I give you. We have the power not only to tread over those things that are trying to hinder us, but we, He gives us power over the enemy. Amen. And nothing by enemy shall hurt us. What does He say? He says, I give you. That's the words that leapt out. That's what was speaking to my heart. You know, we can take those scriptures and He makes it personal for us. Oh, do you know what He said over here in John 14 and verse 2? He said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. What's leaping out? I go prepare a place for you. I go prepare a place for you. When you allow the Word of God to come alive and you're looking at the Scripture, you're reading the Scripture, oh, I'm meditating on it. I'm thinking, God, you've gone away to prepare a place for me. He said, if it weren't so, I would have told you that I'm coming again. He's coming again to get us. Don't you want to go where Jesus is at? Don't you want to know what the author is saying to you today? you got to get in the Word of God. You got to read it. I don't care. You can read chapters and chapters and chapters and get nothing. But we can take just these one, these simple little verses right here. And what are we pulling from it? What are you hearing God say to you today? Do you know the author of these verses that we've read? Do you know the author? He said, I give you power. I give you power. You can overcome. Amen. I go to prepare a place for you. Oh, Jesus. He's telling us, hang on. You can do this. Amen. With my help. He tells us in 15, he talks about how he's the vine and we're the branches. He said, if you abide in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. He can do nothing is what the Word says. I can't do nothing. Hallelujah without Him. The author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. And, and at times, like I said earlier, those of us that are saved, we at times forget where God has brought us from. Oh God. And I pray, Father, keep me at the foot of the cross. I am nothing. I am nothing, God. Hallelujah. I am nobody. I said this song was saying, trying to tell everybody about somebody that can save your soul. But I'm nobody. God, keep me at the foot of the cross. Because at times when I forget or this world plunges in on me and we can get into the flesh. The Bible tells me this. He said, For all of sin and come short of the glory of God. Oh, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3 and 23. So when I may get puffed up or at times that we, we get in ourselves, i got to remember, you've got to remember that we've all messed up at some time in our life. 
We've all made mistakes. Every one of us walking the face of this earth has made bad choices. All of us at one time or another have done selfish things. We have also done hurtful things to people. We are without we are not without sin. We've all sinned is what the Bible says. And Jesus picked it up as they caught the woman in adultery and they were going to stone her. So Jesus and I just oh I'm passionate about this scripture right here. I don't know about you, but it keeps this sister in check. Jesus said this in John 8 and 7. He said, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Oh, hallelujah. Whenever I think, you know, I, I fight flesh just like everybody else. I'll tell on me. Everybody else acts like they ain't got no problems with themselves. Yeah, I'm sanctified. Yeah, I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Yeah, God has blessed me with different gifts and callings in my life. Amen. But there are times that this flesh will try to rise up. And that's why I said, God, keep me at the foot of the cross. I've got to remember that I have sinned, that I've done those things. Amen. Not to drag me back. Oh, but to help me to keep pushing forward. Amen. But Jesus said right there, you that has not had any sin in your life, go ahead and cast the first stone. I've sat in services after services and we've pounded the people and beat the sheep so terribly that we forget that the stone one day was coming our way, but Jesus dropped it. Oh, hallelujah. When we, we repent of our sins, they're not to be remembered anymore. Jesus, don't come back and throw it at you. But I want to keep it in my memory, like I said, to keep me going forward and not going back. But can I tell us, those that are without the sin is what Jesus said. He said, go ahead and cast the first stone at her. Can I tell us that there might be a message one day coming about the day that the stones dropped? None of us can walk around at any time. Oh, God, and act like we've walked in such a perfect manner before Him. It's just every day giving us an opportunity to repent of our selfish ways, our evil deeds, our things that inwardly that nobody knows about, but God sees and He knows. And, he, you know, we're standing there and just judging people so harshly. We're looking at them, you know. Oh, God, help us today. We've got to break that mode. I want to know the author. And when I know the author, when I realize the author of these words and when Jesus said hey you don't have any sin among you go ahead and cast the first stone Paul picked it up and he said for all of sin and come short of the glory of God when I realize these words and they come alive in my heart and after I have repented amen I can rest in his presence just enough to know that his words are true I can rest in them like I said once I've repented then I can take the word of God at what it is to know Him. Glory to God. Oh, the author and the finisher of my faith. Do you know the author today? Let me close with this scripture. The Lord help us. Hallelujah. Ephesians 3 and 20. Hallelujah. This one, I got a couple things out of it. But let us read the Word of God to find what is for our individual. What God is saying to us individually. As that Ephesians 3 and 20, the Bible says, Now unto Him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power of us. You want to change? Who are you looking to to change? Who are you asking? Who are you thinking of asking to help you with change? It said to him that is able. That's the one thing I got out of it. Him that is able. God is more than able. What's the second thing I got out of it? To do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. That's what the Bible says. But he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I ask or think. Making it personal now. Hallelujah. And what's the third thing I got out of it? It's out according to the power that worketh in us is what the Bible says. And we're going to say to the power that worketh in me. I have as much of God in my life 
and direction and guidance and spirit led as I want God. We allow God or we don't allow God. Because God doesn't force His self on any one of us. It's left up to us to surrender all. And I tell you, when we get into the Word of God and we read it as it is being placed out to us today, can I tell us that things that we struggled with before, places that we're in that seem like we can't turn it loose, we've got pride on one end, we've got I can do it on this end, or, or just so hurt, so bad, this, so many different excuses that we can give in if we're not careful. But I tell you, once you allow the Word of God to be met to you and made personally to you, amen, and you begin to pray that Scripture back, can I tell you, you're willing to release it all to God. Because you have found Him to truly be that author. He means every word that He says. And He says every word that He means. Do you know the author? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus, that is the author. Looking unto Jesus, that is the high priest. That is sitting at the right hand of the Father. Looking unto Jesus who is the righteous and holy judge. Looking unto Jesus who is the finisher of our faith. Breaking it down, making it personal of my faith. Hallelujah. Do you know the author? As we go into the year of 2017. Do we read the word of God for it to touch us in a personal way? Do we make it in a personal way? Are we looking for what God is saying to us and how He is speaking to us? Are we choosing those words? Do we find those words that stick out to us and the phrases? And do you make it yours? Do you chew on it and make it yours? And do you pray? Pray that scripture back to God with the boldness and the security because He has said it. I can say it because He has said it. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let go and let God settle it as you walk in his presence, allowing the word of God to become alive in your life, making him more real, than he has ever been. It's good that we can run through uh, different Bible reading schedules and Bible studies and those things are great, but to have an encounter with God all for yourself. There's no schedule or Bible study out there that could ever replace that. Once you can get into that place and know the author and the finisher of your faith. Do you know the author? I pray that you'll meet him before. It's too late and until next time, we'll...